Holy crap, guys. I don't even know where to start. There is literally so much news that Pokemon just gave us about Pokemon Sun and Moon. Like, it's actually mind-blowing just the sheer amount of information we just got from the trailer and from the Pokemon website itself. They are literally, okay, it, it, it doesn't even make sense. They're showing us so many new Pokemon. They're showing us so many new features. This is definitely the craziest information we've gotten so far. And it also confirms a lot of things that I'm going to be talking about in other videos because there's literally so much news that they gave us today that I can't fit it all in one video. I'd be literally be here for an hour. And I literally said literally like 50 times, but that's how serious this is, okay? That's how serious this is. So right now, this first video, Video is going to be about the new Pokemon that they revealed and then we're going to move on to the Z moves and all the other stuff that they showed in the trailer okay but look at, what is even happening I can't believe this I cannot believe that there are new forms okay I think Shady might have been right about the mega evolutions disappearing because it would have been very easy for them to just make mega executor and make him dragon and, and grass right but instead, they make him in a, co a completely new form of an executor. So I wonder if you're just going to be able to catch this executor or change a previous executor into this. Or maybe just evolve, execute into this executor straight up. Like, I, I need I need some I need some answers, man. All they're doing is telling us that this is a lowland executor. So I'm pretty sure, it, from the sound of it, it sounds like, it, like, like execute just straight up evolves into this. That's what it sounds like to me, which is pretty, I just don't get it. Like, what? where is this coming from? Why did they do this? I think it's really cool, but I just have so many questions about it. Let's read about Alolan Executor. He's Grass and Dragon, and he has the ability Frisk. The environment of the Alola region, where strong sunlight pours down all year round, brought about this change in Executor's form. The people of Alola boast that the Alolan Executor is the true form of Executor. So, like, does it sound like to, does it sound to you like executes just straight up evolves into this when it evolves now? Because that'd be pretty sick. That makes sense. It it it's just it lives in a different place. So through evolution, it turns into a different form based on where it lives. Because there's so much sunlight there. But like, I don't I don't know. That's so interesting to me. It really is. Unlike other Executor, the Alolan Executor has a fourth head on its tail. This fourth head controls the tail independently and can take on opponents to the rear that can't be reached by the main head's attacks. Huh. So that boy, that boy watches his own back because he can't trust nobody. <laughs> this Pokemon excels at whipping its long neck like a lash to attack with its hard heads. But that neck can sometimes become a weakness. Of course. Of course. So it's literally like a giraffe. It's literally a palm tree. It's literally a palm tree. <laughs> Holy crap, dude. Grass and Dragon. It has to be better than normal Executor. So, so like, is this a buff to Executor? Is normal Executor still in the game? Or is, is it being replaced by this? Like, I have so many questions. I have so many questions. Can you turn Executor into this Executor? Or does Execute just straight up evolve into this? I need answers, man. I need answers. And then we have another picture of the old executor and the new executor. That's so crazy to me, dude. Let's move on. We need to read more about this. Okay, we need to read more about this. We have Alolan Vulpix. Ice type. It's just straight up ice type. How does a fire type just straight up turn into an ice type? Like, that doesn't even make sense. What happened to the sunlight of the Alola region? Like, th this is contradictory. Let me, let me read this. Okay, let me read this. It is said that Vulpix came to the Alola region together with humans, but the fox Pokemon moved to the snowy mountain peaks to avoid the normal habitats of other Pokemon, and thus it ended up taking on this form. So it just straight up evolved into an ice type because it lived in the mountains. Okay. These Alolan Vulpix live on high mountains that remain covered in snow year round. They live in small packs of two to five individuals, helping one another survive. Alolan Vulpix can freeze anything solid by expelling breath at a temperature of negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit from its mouth. It doesn't fare well in the heat. What? It's a Vulpix! It doesn't fare well in the heat, but when the temperature gets too high, it produces ice from its tail to lower the surrounding temperature. Okay, so this, this honestly just sounds like a different Pokemon. Like, Vulpix and Alolan Vulpix are just straight up different Pokemon. That's what it sounds like to me. They're just not even like... This is just, 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 just does not make any sense. Alolan Vulpix is an ice type that doesn't do well in the heat. 
Vulpix is a fire type. These Pokemon are honest. They're, they're related, but they're, they're, they're just completely different. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is absolutely insane. Vulpix just became an ice type. Like, he's not even fire type anymore in the Alola region. That's crazy. That is crazy. This opens, like, this literally, like, <laughs> like, does this count as a different Pokemon? Like, does Alolan Vulpix have a different number in the Pokedex? It's literally a different Pokemon. It's ice type. It's not fire type. It's ice type. I, I don't think you guys understand how crazy that is. I literally don't know what to say about this. That's how crazy it is. There are literally two different Pokemon. Like, can I have Alolan Vulpix and Vulpix on the same team? Like... Can I have Alolan Ninetales and Ninetales on the same team and have them count as two different Pokemon? Can I do that? Holy shit! Okay, let's do this. I, I just really don't know what to say right now. <laughs> Holy crap, dude. Speaking of Alolan Ninetales, here Alolan Ninetales is. Alolan Ninetales live on a snowy peak that is revered in the Alola region as a holy mountain. They are treated as sacred emissaries, and people meet them with awe and fear. This Pokemon's personality is extremely gentle, and at times it has helped humans who seem to be in distress. However, it shows no mercy at all to anyone or anything that dares to damage its territory. The Alolan Ninetales is able to produce ice crystals from the fur that covers its body. It can use these ice crystals to block attacks, or it can form balls of ice with them, which it fires like bullets at opponents. The power of these ice missiles is great enough to pulverize rock, but like it's it's an ice and ice and fairy type, my boy. Like what the fuck is that? Ice and fairy type. Nine tails is just purely fire type, but this Alola Nine Tails is ice and fairy type. That's a new type combination that we've never seen before. That's a brand new Pokemon. This Pokemon is not Nine Tails. It's Alola Nine Tails. It's literally a different Pokemon, people. Ice and fairy type. What is going on? This opens the possibilities all the way up because now it seems like any Pokemon can just straight up have a new typing just because it lives in the Alola region. That's crazy. There's literally no way that these are only going to be the only Alolan type Pokemon. This is crazy. And it seems like all the Pokemon that they've changed so far have been Gen 1 Pokemon. Executor, Ninetales, we saw a Sandshrew in there. Like, I think Shady might have been right about the Mega Evolution being gone, but that's gonna be for another video. I think he might have been right. They're just straight up changing Pokemon types. They're just straight up putting things in like Z moves. They're just straight up taking things out. They're straight up adding things. Like, I don't know. We have not heard one thing about Mega Evolution yet, but we're seeing all these new Pokemon. They could have easily made these Pokemon, like like the Executor, for example. They could have easily made that a Mega Evolution, but they didn't. They just straight up made it a new Pokemon. That's crazy. Eight minutes into the video, I'm still talking about this Executor. It's just so interesting to me. There's so much stuff that, there's so many questions that I have. Like, look at this Alolan Sancho. Okay, first of all, let's talk about how it's ice and steel. Holy crap, you are getting lit up by fighting moves, fire moves, ground moves. You're, you're, that sounds like a bad typing combination to me. I don't know about you guys. That sounds pretty bad to me. <laughs> Sandshrew have historically lived in desert areas, but the frequent eruptions of nearby volcanoes drove the Sandshrew to abandon the desert and migrate to snowy mountains, where they took on this form. Sandshrew's body... Wait, why, why do you have to go from one extreme to the other? Why can't you just go to like a nice... I don't know. Why do you have to go to the mountains that are where it's snowing just because it's hot where you live? Like, what do you say? <laughs> Sandshrew's body changed to adapt to the harsh environment of the snowy mountains. The Alolan Sandshrew has a shell of ice covering its skin, which is like hard steel. It excels defensively, but it lacks flexibility and can't curl its body into a ball like a ground type Sandshrew can. <laughs> Its heavy weight makes the Alolan Sandshrew slower than a normal Sandshrew, but the claws on its hands and feet allow it to move across the ice without slipping. When it wants to move quickly, it uses its stomach to slide across the ice like a curling rod. Okay, so that does not sound like a like a good adaptation, if you ask me. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna go on to Alolan Sandslash, who also is ice and steel and has the ability Snow Cloak. The Alolan Sandshrew of the Snowy Mountains evolve into Alolan Sandslash with spiny backs that are covered in ice. Thanks to their icy coating, these spines are large and sharp. Alolan Sandslash hide themselves in the snow when strong enemies appear. 
leaving only their needles exposed and ready for business. <laughs> they got a tie on, don't they? <laughs> the weight of the ice that covers its body makes these Alolan Sand Slash heavier than normal Sand Slash, and this causes them to be slower. Yet in snow fields and on ice, they move by creating a path with their claws, and so they're able to move with swiftness. The sprays of snow kicked up by Alolan Sand Slash movements are so beautiful that many photographers head to the snowy peaks to capture the moment. However, Sand Slash looked deep in the mountains and there is great danger of becoming stranded, so it's forbidden to climb the mountains without permission. This is so crazy, dude. Ice and Steel Sand Slash. Why steel? Why steel? Why not ground steel? Like, I... Ice and is that a, I'm pretty sure that's a new type combination. It's pretty bad, honestly. Ice and still sounds like complete garbage to me. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. <laughs> but folks, that is not all we have for the new Pokemon. We, you know, those those are just the new old Pokemon or the old new Pokemon or whatever whatever you want to call it. Okay, we also have brand new Pokemon from the Alola region for Pokemon Sun and Moon. First up, we have Fomantis, and it's funny that a Pokemon with the word Mantis in its name. It's just a pure grass type. That's that 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 doesn't. That, I okay okay. <laughs> he's a he's a grass type trying to be a bug type. He's the sickle grass Pokemon. Okay, got it. Fomantis is nocturnal and it performs photosynthesis while it sleeps during the day by spreading out its leaves in all directions. Because of the danger of staying in the same location two days in a row, Fomantis begins its search for the next day's spot as soon as the sun sets. For Fomantis, photosynthesis is not just a source of energy. It is a necessity to achieve the strength and brilliant correlation of its evolved form. Photosynthesis is precious to Fomantis, and it will fiercely attack those who get in the way of that process. Fomantis excel at long-range attacks like Razor Leaf and Solar Beam. Solar Beam is indeed a powerful move, but since it uses up the energy that the Pokemon has stored through photosynthesis, Fomantis rarely uses it. Interesting, interesting. Now we're going to move on to the evolution of Fomantis, Lurantis. Now, why is this Pokemon not a, a bug type? I don't understand. It's just a grass type. It literally looks like a bug. It's a Mantis. It's definitely a Mantis. Lurantis draws opponents near to itself with its flower-like appearance and aroma, and then it takes them down. It's said to be the most gorgeous of all grass type Pokemon. Okay, that's, that's debatable. That's debatable. <laughs> that is definitely debatable. <laughs> Due to its brilliant coloration and elegant moves, Lorantis' appearance is maintained through detailed grooming. It will trust the trainer who does a good job of caring for it, but it will apparently have a difficult time growing closer to a lazy trainer. Lorantis can learn Solar Blade. Ooh, that sounds freaking powerful. Hold up. We slash people with beams a lot. Oh, beams a like, what, what is that? <laughs> what is a Solar Blade? <laughs> a move that releases a blade-shaped beam to mint up its foes. The blade is so sharp, it is said that it can slice a rock in half. Okay, that's not even impressive considering, like, Mudsdale's out here kicking up cars. You're telling me you can slice a rock in half? That, that's not that, like, like, Leaf Blade existed way before Solar Blade. Like, Leaf Blade cutting up, like, my boy Septile was out here cutting up rocks way before Lawrence. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> With Solar Blade, oh wait, I skipped the sentence. Solar Blade is a move that no Pokemon has been, okay, yeah, I didn't even need to read that. So with Solar Blade, Lurantis absorbs energy from the sun on the first move and then unleashes. <gasps> no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Does that mean that it's a physical solar beam, bitch? What? Okay. I think if, if, what I, if what I'm reading is what I think I'm reading, I'm pretty sure that means that this move is a physical solar beam. So it's gonna be super strong. Holy crap! Lorantis is the totem Pokemon of Lust Jungle, the site of an Akala Island trial. Huh, yeah, well, we're gonna talk about the island trials later. It will overwhelm trial goers with the powerful combos it unleashes with the Pokemon allies it calls the Goons! I can't wait to scream the Goons every time a, 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 a helper Pokemon comes out, or, or ally, sorry, ally, ally, okay, ally. Next up, See, I don't know whether to be disappointed or hype because this Pokemon still looks cool to me, but he just looks even more like Donald Trump now. Like, there's no debating that he looks like Donald Trump. I, I didn't want to agree with you guys before, but now he's just straight up Donald Trump. Like, and I, I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> but we talking about my boy Gumshoes. This is my boy Gumshoes right here. He still has the stakeout ability. He's still the stakeout Pokemon. He's pretty short. And he's kind of chunky. Now, that's going to be important because we're going to be talking about this in a different video later on. But, my boy Gumshoes 
Gumshoes' method of targeting prey is the exact opposite of Young Goose's strategy. While Young Goose prowls around, Gumshoes stakes out its prey's usual routes and waits patiently for it to come by. Oh my, that's that's sinister. That's sinister. He, so he, he stalks you for a couple days. And then right when he knows you're going to be caught slipping, that's when he pops out. Yeah, I like this Pokemon again. <laughs> Gumshoes! Gumshoes has a tenacious personality, which is why it targets one prey for so long without wavering. But when the sun goes down, it runs low on stamina, falling asleep right on the spot. Gumshoes can withstand a great deal of hunger. It's able to stay perfectly still while waiting for its prey, keeping watch without eating a thing. That boy is a monster. I hope this Pokemon's good still. I really hope it's good. I hope it's fast, I hope it's strong. I hope it's all that. Next up we have Minior, which is a pretty interesting Pokemon, rock and flying type, which is pretty funny. And it has the new ability Shields Down. Minior are formed in the stratosphere and live by absorbing the detritus around them. When they've consumed a large quantity of particles, their bodies become heavy and they fall towards the planet's surface. Minior has a hard and heavy outer shell with a core inside it. The Meteor Pokemon seems to be made in such a way that if the shell breaks, it becomes lighter and can deal out quick attacks. Huh. So it sounds like when, okay, so it sounds like, you know, let me, fi let me finish reading it. When a shell breaks, the core in its center is revealed. You won't know what color will appear until this happens. Minior has the new Shields Down ability, which no other Pokemon has had before. With the Shields Down ability, it will have excellent defensive capabilities as long as its shell is intact. It will also be protected from status condition, but when its HP drops below half, its shell will break and it will change to a form better suited to attacking. Okay, so like I was gonna say before, it sounds like this Pokemon has, okay, obviously it has high defense when it has shields down, so it probably gets like a, a defense boost. It, it's immune to status conditions, which is pretty cool. And it sounds like as soon as the shield breaks, it probably loses that defense and gains attack instead. Uh, I wonder, now, now this will be important. It's still important either way, uh, it'll be more important if this Pokemon is good. It'll also be very important if this Pokemon's speed doesn't change between forms. Okay. Now, I'll explain what I mean there. Uh, let's take a Pokemon like Darmanitan, for example. It has Zen Mode. When its HP drops below half, it turns into Zen Darmanitan. But its speed drops so much that it's pretty much useless. If Zen Mode Darmanitan still had the same speed stat uh, while it changed into Zen Mode, it'd be really good. Okay. Now this Pokemon sounds like it could be good, but it sounds like, I, I don't know. I it, it sounds like it gets fat. Okay, let's, let's, okay, let me, let me explain myself. If this Pokemon is slower and then becomes faster and gets stronger, like to attack, that's pretty cool. That's good, okay? Zenmo Darmanitan was really strong, became a different typing, but became so slow that it didn't really have any viable sets, especially because it became, it was a physical attacker that became a special attacker. So that doesn't really make sense, right? So how do you, how do you EV train a physical attacker that becomes a special attacker? You have to invest in probably, um, sorry, uh, it's just weird, you know? Cause Darmanitan's really fast and physically strong. Zen Darmanitan was really slow, bulky, and, and had a lot of special attacks. So how do you EV train that Pokemon, right? It just doesn't make any sense. Now this Pokemon, I'm bringing this up because depending on this thing's stats when it's in uh, its shields down form or when it's not in its shields down form, I think this can be a pretty interesting Pokemon. That, that's why I'm bringing all this stuff up. So I'm very curious to see how this Pokemon turns out because if its speed doesn't change between forms, I think this Pokemon will be pretty good if it has high stats on, in both sides, you know? So I guess we'll see, huh? <laughs> the next Pokemon we have is the pre-evolution of Mudsdale, Mudbray, the donkey Pokemon. <laughs> I'm definitely writing on this thing, definitely. But shout, shout out to Eeyore, okay? Shout out to Eeyore. Mudbray could once be found all over the world, but it was overhunted and ended up on the verge of extinction. It said that the Alola region is the only place in the world where Mudbray can still be found in the wild. Mudbray boasts superhuman strength, a surprise considering its small body. Mudbray can carry loads up to 50 times its own weight on its back or dragging behind it. Mudbray, I, I, I definitely believe that considering what Mudsdale is capable of. <laughs> Mudbray loves playing in the mud. It's easy to live in harmony with this Pokemon as long as you provide an environment where it can play in the mud. If it can't frolic in the mire, however, Mudbray will become stressed and may stop listening to Ordit. Ooh, you better please that boy. That boy powerful. He'll evolve into a Mudsdale and kick you in the mouth. <laughs> Now this is a Pokemon that I really wanted to talk about because it's very interesting. Uh, well, I mean, I, 
Okay, let's put it this way, okay. If this Pokemon is good, or if the stats are good, I don't, I, I just, I don't know, okay? I don't know. I don't know if these Pokemon are gonna have the same stats, but just be different typings, considering which one you have, or if they're all gonna be completely different Pokemon, okay? But, these Pokemon are going to be able to be found on the four islands of the Alola region. So, uh, there's that. But this is Oricorio. And we're going to read up about these Pokemon because I think they're very interesting. So, this is going to be the Bale style Oricorio. Fire and flying, which is pretty cool. And it has the ability Dancer. Oricorio changes its form by sipping the nectar of certain fly. Wait! Wait, wait, wait a second. Does that mean that I only need to catch one of these and I can change its form whenever I want? <gasps> I thought you had to go to the different islands and catch each one. Wait a second. Okay. Since it has four different forms, the same as the number of islands in Alola, it would seem that the different Oricorio live on each of the islands. See, now, now to me that meant that, you know, they it, it was kind of like a Gastrodon type thing, you know? But apparently you could just change its form. Is that is that true? Like, is there a way? I, is there gonna be a way I can change forms in the game? Are they all gonna have the same stats? Just change typings? Is it like Rotom, where you can just change forms? <gasps> Who knows? Who knows? The Bale style Oricorio is very passionate, and power fills its body when it dances. It sends downy fluff flying during its intense dances. By igniting this fluff, it can unleash a fiery dance attack. Oricorio has the new dancer ability that no other Pokemon has had before. If another Pokemon in the field uses a dancing move, then Oricorio will be able to use the same move immediately afterward thanks to its dancer ability. Okay, so obviously I'm going to... I mean, it showed in the trailer, but um, uh, things like uh, uh, Feather Dance, uh, Dragon Dance, Teeter Dance... Uh, what's, the, what's the bug one? I forgot. <laughs> but yeah, moves like that are going to uh, get copied immediately. So if you use Dragon Dance in front of this Pokemon, then I'm also going to be able to use Dragon Dance right after you do. So that's pretty cool. But that honestly sounds very, very, very extremely gimmicky. And I don't think that'll be a good ability at all unless you can predict somebody using Dragon Dance in battle. And then, I, I don't know. It just depends on so many things on how, like, it, it just depends. Swords dance, I guess. <laughs> what other dances are there? Uh, uh, there's the bug one. Uh, uh, I can't believe I forgot the name of this. Quiver dance, uh, fiery dance. There's a bunch of dances that, that you can do, but like like I said, it doesn't really sound that practical, you know? It, it doesn't sound like a good ability at all to me. It sounds super gimmicky, but I really want to see how good these Pokemon are. Revelation Dance is a move that only Oricorio can learn, and its type changes based on the Oricorio's current style. Alright, speaking of current styles, we're going to go on to the next style, Pom Pom Style. <laughs> now, this one is Electric and Flying, and this is what I was talking about. These Pokemon are all different types. It's the same Pokemon, but different typings. Okay. Uh, the Pom Pom Style Oricorio is very friendly towards people. And it uses dancing to encourage trainers who are feeling glum. It's like a cheerleader. That's so funny. When it dances, the feathers are charged with static electricity. It can attack with these charged feathers, and sometimes it unleashes a powerful electric shock. Or a choreo... Okay, so that's that. Okay, so I only need to read the paragraph that describes its actual style. This is the... Pa okay, pa Pau style? This one's psychic and flying. So they're all the same weight. They're all the same height, I believe. So that's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure that, okay, if they're all the same height and all the same weight, then you probably can change one Oricorio into other typings, which is pretty cool, man. I wonder if it's going to be more specially based or, or uh, physically based, though. The Pau style of Oricorio acts at its own pace, which sometimes makes it difficult to deal with. It sharpens its spirit and moves through dance, which increases its psychic power. It's said that this dance expresses its gratitude to the guardian deity Pokemon. That's, that's interesting as well. And then last but not least, we have the Sensu style. Ghost and Flying. I'm pretty sure that's also a new type combination. Oh, no, it's not. Drifloom. Drifloom and Drifloom. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, but other than those two, I think that this is the only other Ghost and Flying type Pokemon. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. The Sensu style Oricorio is quiet and collected. By means of its dance, it gathers the spirits drifting about in an area and borrows their power to fight. What the fuck, man? <laughs> borrows their power to fight. People who migrated from Kanto feel a great liking for this Pokemon because its dance reminds them of their homeland. Really? That's because Lavender Town's there. <laughs> wow. So much information, man. This is crazy. This is crazy. Okay. 
So that's that for the new Pokemon. I'm going to leave everything else to the other videos that I'm going to be uploading later on today. There's just so much information. Like, how long is this video? I don't know, like 20 minutes? This is just this is just insane. This is just purely the Pokemon that they showed today, too. I didn't get into all the other buttloads of information that they showed. It's crazy, man. Thank you guys for watching. Please stay tuned for the other videos. They will be up shortly. Um, don't go anywhere because we'll be right back, okay? This, this is just insane. This is insanity. I just don't know what to say anymore. The, these these Delta Pokemon that are showing me here. <laughs> this is just crazy, man. Anyways, I'll be back, guys. See ya. Follow me on Twitter at Shofu.